Hello guys and welcome to HJW Gaming. In this video I'm going to be bringing you an updated ring guide to cover off some of the changes in the ring made by the devs and also to help newer players walk through where you should skill your ring points as you go through your season. If you find any of this information useful please smack the like button and also hit subscribe to see more of my guides coming up in the future. Without further ado, into the video. First up, during your first 10 ring levels you will only have access to the top left rings tree and this starts with dominance. Now dominance is one of the most important rings, ring skills to put in and you should always put skills into this whenever possible so you can get as maximum tiles as possible. Next up in this tree is invigoration. Now invigoration I think has now also become a very important ring skill. The reason for that is ability points as you can see are a finite regenerating resource so therefore, you need to try and use these really, or else you're wasting them, letting them just run out without regenerating. And invigoration, giving 20 extra stamina to your commanders, I think is the best way to do this. Next up, you have time out of time, which allows you to skip through a build, uh, 10 minutes worth of build using a ring point. I don't think this is particularly important, as you can just use gems to do this instead, instead of using precious ability points, which can be better used given your commander's stamina. Abundant Might and Abundant Wisdom can also be reasonably useful for upping strength, though only spare ring points should be put into these, and depending on whether you use focus or attack-based commanders. Last up, I mentioned Clairvoyance. This is uh, one, the, the only other skill on your ring in this top left tree that uses up ability points and it gives information about the armies on the tile. I don't think this is very important and you should instead not waste the ability points. Once your ring reaches level 10, you will unlock the top right skill tree and this begins with Enormous Power. Enormous Power is an excellent ring skill that you should increase to the maximum of 10 as soon as possible as it increases your ability points by one for each ring skill point you put in. This is important as ability points regenerate 100% every 24 hours. Having more ability points therefore means that you're regenerating one point at a faster rate. As without a point into this, within 24 hours you're regenerating 20 points. And with this, you're regenerating 30 points within 24 hours. So each point comes that little bit quicker. Now, you do also have the extract skill, which has been moved onto this ring skill tree. However, I would never ever put, consider putting a point into this. Now it's been moved onto the level 10 side of the ring skill tree. This is only ever useful at the beginning of seasons before you had the gather skill in order to get some initial resource and free up bottlenecks. I would never take this over gather, which you're seeing now, as it's less efficient and you get less resource per ability point. Gather I would take immediately as soon as you can during this, uh, as soon as you unlock and get to ring skill level 10 as it allows you to free up ring bottlenecks uh, in exchange for some commander stamina and ability points and is excellent for getting more resource. As for the abundant trees I wouldn't recommend taking any of these uh, at least not until you have spare ring points uh, and I would make sure to put instead any sparing points into Abundant Might and Abundant Focus, and only once those are maximised, consider putting points into these four skill trees. They might give a little bit more resource, but not enough to make it worth wasting ring points on. Once you reach ring level 30, you unlock the bottom right skill tree, which begins with consider considerable XP. Now this is a useful ring skill as it allows you to gain up to 10% additional XP on your commanders and level your commanders that little bit quicker, which can be great, but I wouldn't recommend putting your skill points immediately into this. I would reskill when you reach ring level 30, but I wouldn't put your points immediately into this. Instead, I would put all of my points as soon as possible into combat power. The reason for that is combat power gives you additional damage dealt up against uh, non-player armies, meaning the various different tiles. The reason this is important, as additional damage against tiles will mean that you lose less troops and therefore spend less resources conscripting troops and less time. So I would maximise combat power and then put points into considerable XP. Before you can take combat power though, you do have to take mind sharpener. Now mind sharpener doesn't serve the same value as it used to previously, uh, it means that you can send your commander away on a tile and gain XP. You have to use a certain number of ring points, stamina, um, in order to gain XP depending on the power level of the tile. It's really not worth doing anymore as you can train up instead capturing tiles. 
because with the uh, level 40 limit now, before you have to gain XP through PvP, you can gain enough XP through tiles that you don't really need to use Mind Sharpener. Next up on this tree is Combat Master. This allows you to gain additional XP through mob sweeping. Once again, this can be useful, but I wouldn't recommend putting points into it, particularly not at the start of your season, as additional XP through uh, hitting mobs isn't particularly great, uh, and you can instead just get it through tiles. And Quick Witted is similar, additional XP from Mind Sharpener. As I just said, I don't think I ever really use Mind Sharpener during my seasons, so therefore I've never seen use in the Quick Witted skill, and I'd recommend avoiding it. Once you reach ring level 50, you do unlock the bottom left skill tree, which begins with military fortifications. This increases the durability of your forts and also increases your fort limit. So you begin at 10 fort limit and you can increase it up to 20. And the durability means it's harder to destroy and require more siege and stamina from your opponents. This isn't a particularly fantastic skill and I wouldn't recommend reskilling in order to get this. Um, off the back of this is also Quick March, which allows you to speed up one instance of a march. However, this is only really usable during PvE if you're trying to take a tile before your opponents in war. I don't think you can Quick March into an enemy army to kill a little bit quicker, but I'll stand corrected on that. The, um, the amount of speed up you get is not particularly fantastic, and it's only really useful if you're going to do long marches uh, across the map so I wouldn't really recommend picking this up particularly either or prioritizing it I don't think it's a particularly fantastic skill abundant force however is a brilliant skill particularly if I assume by this point when you hit ring level 50 you're likely going to be in pvp combat with another force and if you can get to ring level 50 sooner than them abundant force will help give you a massive advantage as if you can conscript your troops 10% quicker than they can you will of course help if you can uh, help that all their troops expire and you can get yours back sooner it's obviously a massive advantage so this is a very strong skill now to talk through when i would reskill my ring now i would definitely reskill my ring at level 10 just to make sure any points i had at that point put into abundant might and abundant wisdom i could take out and instead place into enormous power and of course gather to free up any resource bottlenecks as at ring level 10 you will be struggling for resources and wanting to develop your keep as quickly as possible so I would definitely ring reskill at ring level 10. From then on any ring skill points I get once I have maximized enormous power that would be my priority I would then place into first off dominance to make sure I have my dominance as high as possible and then any spare points would go into abundant might and abundant wisdom. I would then use that until I get to ring level 30, where I would once again reskill, as you can see I have done here. I would then put one point into considerable XP in order to take Mind Sharpener and then maximise combat power, as that plus 20% damage dealt against non-player armies is huge in reducing losses. From then on, any additional ring points I got would first off go into increasing considerable XP until I had plus 10%, and that would be my priority, along with also putting points into dominance whenever I can so that I can keep my tile limit as high as possible, deal as much damage to tiles to not lose troops, and get maximum XP. Any spare from there would once again go into abundant might and abundant wisdom. Once I hit ring level 50 would be once again where I reskilled and those points would once again come out of those two and I'd put one into military fortifications and the rest into abundant force. From then on I would kind of debate around military fortifications as it depends on if you're finding yourself at fort limit quite often I would then put points into this however often it may not be needed and instead I would prioritise if at war putting points into abundant might and abundant wisdom as if you're at war you always want these maximised to make sure you're dealing the maximum possible amount of damage by having the maximum attack and focus possible so that's always useful. But priority wise, you always want to make sure you have dominance as high as possible, particularly early season when you're trying to farm tiles as high as possible. Next, I want to talk through the various different individual ring skills you get for choosing your faction within Rise to War. So each faction has its own individual ring skill and this could help shape which faction you're deciding to choose and will definitely uh, shape the way in which you choose to play the faction. So I just want to talk through these quickly now. First up is Linden. 
So Linden gives you a slightly higher grain and wood yield from ring ability, it says here. What that means is when you use the extract ring skill, you will get higher amounts of wood and grain. In my opinion, this is a fairly poor skill as the extract skill is not particularly great and I don't put any ring points into it, as I said earlier. So in my opinion, this is one of the poorest ring skills available. Next up, we have Angmar, which says that it's enveloped in a mysterious power, saving some soldiers from death. What this means is your soldier's death rate is reduced by 5% on top of the current death rate. This means that when you go into either a PvE or PvP fight, the number of soldiers that physically die is reduced by 5%. However, this 5% is added to your apothecary, so they are wounded soldiers. So you will use slightly more grain in recovering soldiers, and you'll have a fuller apothecary faster. However, if that doesn't matter too much to you, say you use a lot of gems in order to speed up your wounded recovery time, this will help you maintain more soldiers and stay on the battlefield for longer. So this could be a very strong skill in the right hands. Next up we have Lothlorien, which says that it helps the wounded soldiers heal quicker from their wounds. What this means is your wounded units, so those that are held within the apothecary, will recover 10% faster. This is very useful for spender players to save a few gems that they would otherwise use, uh, of course, speeding up the apothecary. But it's particularly good for free-to-play players, as it means they'll have more soldiers more readily available. 10% uh, is a fairly big buff, so I think this is, uh, again, a very, very strong ring, to, uh, ring buff. Erebor says that... Uh, this enables Dwarven soldiers to be trained faster, which is exactly what it says on the tin. Your Dwarf units have a reduced conscription time of 10%, so again, it enables you to get more troops in faster. This, in my opinion, is one of the strongest ring buffs, as the Guardian I've already placed in some of my other videos as the best unit in the game. And if you can pump these out 10% faster than any other faction, you'll be in a great position for PvP. So I really, really like this ring skill. Next up, we have Rune, which says they deal more damage in desert regions, which again explains it fairly well. So when battling on desert lands, this ring skill provides 12% additional damage. Now, this is a pretty large buff, particularly in PvP. You might want to choose Rune, though, because desert regions are fairly scarce outside of the Rune region. So if you're expected to be an underdog and have opposition pressing in on you, then that's where Rune's ring skill really shines, as you can use that 12% buff defensively to help get better results than you otherwise would. Next is Mordor, which says it makes it possible to followers of the ring to use ring abilities more frequently. In fact, more specifically, what this actually does is give you a 20% boost to your max ability points. This is fairly good as it means that you can use things like Quick March or Gathering more often so that you never hit resource bottlenecks. Though as this can't be taken until you hit ring level 50, you, uh, you are limited and this doesn't help particularly when you need it at the beginning of the season. So in my opinion, this is a reasonably average ring buff, but, uh, but could be fairly useful if you use a lot of ring skills. Next is Gondor. Uh, this says that the men of the land of stone gather more stone and ore. So as it says, what this does is it improves your gather, specifically gather, not extract, only the gather, of stone and ore by 10%. This can be very, very useful as it can help you get out of a, a bottleneck if you're using up a lot of ore, which you likely will be if you're conscripting their tier 4, the Swan Knight, uh, all the various other soldiers, such as the Guardian, which tend to be more ore intensive, though it's not particularly useful if you need more grain. So again, this is fairly average in my opinion. Penultimate faction is Rohan. Uh, so the ring power enables armies of Rohan to move more quickly between forts and other encampments. What this is, is a 50% increase in reposition speed. So this is specifically the march speed between your keep and various other forts. This isn't march speed overall. 50% higher is kind of useful if you need to adjust and reposition quickly. Otherwise, it's not really a buff that will benefit you in PvP the same way that addition, you know, quicker conscription or quicker wounded time would be. So in my opinion, Rohan has one of the poorest ring skills available. And lastly, we have Arnor, 
Now, Arnor, Mysterious Ring Power enables the men of Arnor to obtain XP more quickly from battles. Now, this can actually be excellent, as your XP gain from battles is increased by 10%. Now, this can be particularly useful now that the update has restricted the amount of experience you can get and is also a diminishing return if you're, you're PvP-wise, your levels are too much higher than your opponent's. But a 10% boost can be brilliant just for making sure you get that early level advantage. So in my opinion, Arnor again is a very, very strong ring skill. Now one thing to bear in mind with all of these is that uh, most of them aren't takeable between level uh, before level 30 and most are level ring level 50. So these uh, will, should be taken pretty much as soon as you get to ring level 50 if they're a good skill. Say Lothlorien, Erebor in particular and Mordor. But uh, and particularly Arnor as well, you should take them as soon as possible. But uh, just take a look at your tray and see if it will help you at the current time. And they usually take two ring skill points to use as well. Now with that, that's everything I had to cover. If you found this video useful, please drop a like and please consider subscribing to see more of my guides in future. And with that, I've been HJW Gaming and I hope to see you on the next one.